Hey you folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to my exclusive hands-on preview for Europa Universalis 4. EU4 is the latest grand strategy game from Paradox Development Studios, and it is due out to be released uh, August 13th. Now, I've already made a series of videos doing a, a very detailed overview of the new game mechanics. If you haven't seen that yet, there will be a link down below in the description box, or possibly as an annotation on your screen. Now, that was only using screenshots because uh, there was an embargo on showing video footage of the game, but I now have permission from Paradox to show you actual video of actual gameplay. So we're going to go in and start an, an actual game of EU4. Now this is still a very early preview build, still beta, still in development, so there's almost guaranteed to be a few glitches here or there, um, but overall the game's in pretty darn good shape. Multiplayer is disabled in this build, uh, but that is a big component of the game if you're not aware. In fact, they've improved multiplayer considerably from past versions of the game. It's now integrated on, in, if you're on Steam with your Steam's friend list, for example, very easy to join games. They have hot join, so someone can just host a public game. People can come in, come out. Uh, if someone gets disconnected, that's okay. They can reconnect right back and everything continues to work perfectly fine. There's a pretty decent tutorial this time around, and once we get in the game, I'm actually going to show you their new um, built-in... I don't know, tip system. I, I can't remember the name of the uh, the system, but it's actually quite nice to get some help as you go. So, uh, st start of the game, 1444 is the default start. Um, I believe this is set right at the end of the Last Crusade, and I may be misremembering my history and what the significance of the date is, and I apologize for that. But there are many other um, footnotes or bookmarks, I suppose you could say, that you could start from. So 1444 is the, the default historical start, but you can start as late as, uh, well, at least in terms of bookmark, revolutionary France in the 14th of July, 1789. If I click on that, you'll see that the world is considerably, considerably different. Even if we go and pan over to North America, you can see that, of course, it has been uh, quite colonized at that point. Uh, this game, if you're, if you're new to the EU, as opposed to Crusader Kings, then the big difference is that this deals with nations as opposed to people. And um, as the game progresses, one of the major themes, or two of the major themes that really start to kick into play uh, is religion, specifically the Reformation of the Catholic Church, and of course, colonialism. So I'm going to go ahead with the 1444 start. And um, I, I don't know, there's there's a lot of, you know, I was asked on Twitter what people would like to see me play, and personally, I have actually been having great fun playing some more Muscovy, which is the country that I played in the uh, multiplayer event that Paradox put on in Stockholm uh, earlier this year, where I participated and played against the devs, and it was a lot of fun. But a lot of people wanted to see me look at England again, so I figured, what the hell, let's go and do that. If you don't know, every country is basically playable, and they are all... Um, they're not all balanced to be the same. Some countries are much easier than others, and that's by design. If you're taking on a powerhouse like France or England or Castile or something, you're, I mean, you're set to be super dominant in the world. But you can take these little one province minor nations and try to make something out of them, and then it becomes that much more impressive. So uh, England is, is really interesting. It's not actually a nation that um, has appealed to me for one reason. In, in, the, in the 1444 start, this war, you start off at the end of the Hundred Years War with France and it makes me anxious because you're not really in a position to win it. Now, of course, historically, you do lose it, so I guess that's okay, but it makes me feel all just weird and anxious about it. Um, and I guess I should just accept the fact that I, I probably won't get to hold on to my holdings here or here. I probably have to give them up to France. We do start in the war. France is, you know, sort of like kind of this sinuous serpentine kind of nation here, except that many of the smaller nations in this area are actual, actually vassals of France. So I am at war with kind of all of them here. Armagnac, Auvergne, uh, Bourbonnais, Foix, Orléans, Provence. So they're all at war against me and I currently do not have an ally. So although we can bring one in in just a minute, um, just out of curiosity, is there any chance they'd be willing to take any kind of priest treaty, like, right off? No. Oh, if I offered them two, two provinces, that would actually be enough, which is kind of interesting. Um, because... Again, I, I don't know if I'm in a state to really do it. I do have one of the biggest militaries in the game. The problem right off is that, well, I'm going to definitely lose my troops here. I suppose I should fight it for a little while and see how it goes. Um, I am almost maxed out on my force limit. As long as I rescue these guys, 
because they're about to get jumped on by a huge group of French troops. So as long as I rescue them out of the way, and then I could probably bring the southern France and then start to ferry more of my guys from, from England itself, and then we might be able to put up a decent fighting force here. I, uh, other than the one that I played, the one time I played England in my Let's Play, when I first, my first Paradox video on my YouTube channel for EU3, which was actually my first Paradox video at all, uh, I did play as England, but I really didn't know the mechanics, and I have not played as England in any of those games since then. So, I don't know, I still have memories of that time, but I should know the mechanics better, and I wonder if we can put up a decent fight. We do have to be worried, because Scotland might jump in here, um, and probably some other people will be jumping in as well, but... Maybe we can annoy France to the point where they'd be willing to peace out for just one province. Now, I'm sure they'd declare war again at some point in the future, but the more we can slow down and annoy France, the better, right? Nothing wrong with that. Uh, before we unpause, we do want to do a few things. First of all, we're going to check to see what kind of missions are available to us. Um, construct a grand fleet. So, uh, in EU3, you just get, like, a single mission here. You get a choice of three that you can choose from. So, what do they want us to do? Have... 30 or more heavy ships. Now, if I take a look at my fleets, I have 13 heavy ships currently. Those are my only two fleets, my only two navies, yes. And my naval force limit is 43 or 49. So I can only add six more ships before running into my force limit. So the best I can do without going over the limit is 19 ships. So that mission actually is not really feasible for me at this time. Anyway, established trade in the Americas. I think it's a bit early for us to pull that off, but I quite like the idea of conquering Ireland. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. So it does two things for us. First of all, by accepting us, it's actually going to give us um, some, some missions, or rather some casus belli for us to attack the other four provinces here. We've actually already got meth over here. Um, but now we can legally declare war on, say, Leinster, right? Conquest, take Leinster, so we've got a Casas Belly, so we can do that, and that is great. I'm not doing it right this second, but we can do that. Um, and the other thing is, if I complete the quest, I'll gain five prestige, which, uh, if you're used to Crusader Kings, it doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, in this game, it's quite high. I don't know if it actually caps at 100, but I think it might, actually. So, you know, that's, it, it represents quite a bit more. You're not going to get, like, thousands of prestige or anything in, uh, in Europa Universalis. And it has, it has a number of effects. In Crusader Kings, prestige is mostly a way to keep score, and a couple of actions use currency. And I do think you get, um, you get a diplomacy bonus or relations bonus if you do have high prestige. But here, and you can see from the numbers here, it affects quite a lot of stuff. So high prestige is pretty handy for a few things. Anyway, let me... Uh, my navy, so I've got two fleets. The uh, blue squadron here is made up of light ships, and the light ships, these barks, are good for patrolling trade routes. In fact, they have a button enabled on them for protecting trade. And if I click that, it'll let me pick a trade node to send them to, and then we'll just patrol back and forth. Uh, they will keep pirates at bay, but they will also improve my trade power in the node. At least the last time I checked. Now, I haven't played this very much since I put in a lot of time back in May, so a lot of the mechanics may have changed, and of course I may be confused a lot of the mechanics, so I'm, I do apologize if I make some errors. I know some of the people that follow me are in the beta uh, and have played extensively and may be able to clarify a few things here and there depending on their particular NDA. So um, I'm going to take my barks and I I don't have any naval leaders, and I don't think it's worth um, investing in it. In fact, it would cost diplomatic power to do so. We're going to talk a little bit more about diplomatic power uh, in a moment. I think So I'm going to send this fleet to Bordeaux. That's the only two places where I have uh, merchants working. I have London, where my merchant... Let me send this. So if I switch to the trade map node, I have a merchant in London who is working to try to extract as much money as possible for me. Um, and then I have a merchant in Bordeaux who is working to send trade to London. So that works out pretty well for me. If I end up getting a third merchant, I've got a couple of options. I could stick him in the Black or the North Sea trade route and try to ship more things to London. It's not particularly a wealthy trade route right now, I don't think, but maybe later on it'll become um, more worthwhile. The other option is down here in Sevilla, Sevilla. I could, um, it's got a bit more wealth kicking around, so I could forward more wealth through to the Bordeaux trade node and then keep pushing things there, especially if I've got my navy in pretty good shape. Um, I might be able to do a good job that way. I might be able to split my barks into two 
and have one patrol this trade node, for example. Um, we'll, we'll look more into trade later, par partially because, you know, I don't have all the mechanics down um, pat. So, um, that is Blue Squadron. Now, there's my Royal Navy, uh, and it has my heavy ships, very good at combat. It also has 11 transports, which means I can transport 11 troops at any given time. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, flip back to the political map mode. Oh, I want to show this hints mode, which is very cool. If I click this, look at the screen, some things will turn blue. You see? I'm going to toggle back and forth. So when I click this, and then I can click on something, and it'll give the description of it over here. I think that's really, really quite cool. I, I think it's going to be very handy for any veterans of the series who are like, I don't need to read the manual, I don't need to do the tutorial, but then get in here and might be confused about a couple of things here or there. It's great, and it's got extra like contextual help for different things you can click through. Oh, I don't know why that one doesn't work. Most of the things work. Let me try this again. If I go here and go to administrative power, and go to monarch power, yeah, so maybe some of the buttons don't work, but yeah, see, all these are, are clicking through just great. It's like clicking through Wikipedia. You just keep going and going forever. Um, so I'm going to take this one infantry, and I'm going to attach it to the transport, and then let's grab the uh, Royal Navy here. We're going to send it to Normandy, so it's going to pick up that one guy. We're going to bring it to Normandy, and then we will pick up the rest of the troops, and hopefully... We can get out of here uh, safely. So, that is the starting move. I've got some more units over here. I guess I can leave them there for now. Now, one of the things I do try to do, and I don't know if this is a high priority for everyone, but I like to be right at my force limit. Currently, my force limit is 34, although that is partially based on the number of provinces I have. And if I do end up losing a couple of provinces, then I'll be over. But you know what? We'll deal with that when we when we get there. Uh, I'm just thinking I could afford to build two more regiments and I probably should or should maybe, you know what? I actually won't. Normally I try to get up to that force limit, but I think our force limit will change. Plus, I, I think that we're actually going to go through quite a bit of manpower here just through uh, attrition of warfare. So, um, yeah, it, it's fine, actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Um, I am... That's the fleet, only five units. I think what I might do is split this group in half and then keep one over here by the border of Scotland, just in case they decide to come into play. Uh, you know, there used to be a split in half button, and there probably still is. That transfers everything. Ah, oh, right click for half. Well, that's quite handy, actually. Do something like that. There we go, and we'll keep the uh, the group of seven? Yeah, the group of seven might be okay. We'll put them over here in uh, Northumberland. It's quite hilly. What's the terrain, specifically? Mm, I feel like I'm missing it here. It's marshy and plainsy. I'm pretty sure that defensively it's going to be in our favor. And then I'll leave these guys in Essex because we can pick them up there later. Okay, so I think I've dealt with all my unit moves. Uh, although, eh, I don't want to move on Armagnac now because they could get reinforced there. But if they decide to move around, then I might be able to make a jump on Armagnac and see how that goes. France has some ships here, uh, which is actually kind of tempting that after I do my troop delivery, I might leave my ships right in here. So, um, other things to take care of. Okay, we need to get some advisors going on here. So the advisors come in a variety of flavors, like a theologian here will give me a minus three national revolt risk, so 3% less chance of revolt everywhere in my nation. Now, a the theologian will always give me this exact bonus. Uh, if I happen to have two theologians here of different levels, so this is a level three character, and this is a level one character, it doesn't matter what level they're at, they'll always give me the same benefit. The difference in the level is one, the cost is dramatically different, and what it does is it generates, it adds to my overall administrative power, and I get that much power every month. So I'm gonna go with the level one because I wanna save a little bit of money right now, and it's, I don't think I've gotta rush up there. Um, although the less tech cost is not going to help me right now. This is something you do want, say, right before you buy a new tech, and we'll talk about that later on. I do have a couple of provinces where there can be some revolts, and that would be a little bit annoying, so I'm actually going to go for the lower revolt chance for now. Um, and more than anything, I just want it so that I can get the administrative power increased. Um, 
global trade power is probably really good. I'm sure diplomatic relations, reputation, there's nothing wrong with that either. But um, yeah, we, we do actually get a fair benefit from trade at this point, so we'll get that. And we will get... Um, hmm, well, we could increase our force limit. Fort defense, actually. That's going to be handy right now, because there's going to be some sieging and stuff going on. We have to make a national decision right now, apparently because we have a theologian, we can pass Advancement of Religion Act, which gives us a bonus to missionary strength, but actually increases your national revolt risk, which I don't really care for, so I'm just going to right-click to dismiss that. Disputed succession, revolt's possible, we are currently at war. Okay, I think that is fine. Uh, we haven't looked at a few of the other screens, but that's okay, we don't need to right now. We'll, we'll see them later on. Oh, there we go. See, these guys are moving. So he's going to get there on the 19th. Now if I start moving down, 18th, I can actually beat him. And this one's not turning around either, which I think it actually should go and help defend over here, but we'll take it. Uh, Hungary entered a military alliance with our enemy Provence. Milan. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Oh, speaking of alliances, okay. Portugal over here, we have an alliance with them, so let's call them to arms, which will be quite nice. And then we can talk about diplomats in a second here. Oh, military alliance with Scotland, see, that's a problem. Okay, have they been called into the war? Yeah, there was no pop-up for it, which is, seems odd to me. The other thing we can do is get a royal marriage with Portugal, keep our relations really, really nice and high. Uh, because that'll work nicely. Now, you can see here my diplomats are, these are not, they're not expended, they're not currency that they used to be, they're more agents, a little closer to how they work in Crusader Kings. They don't have stats or anything, but they do have names, but you can, uh, you can give them roles. I think I'm going to take the other one, I'm going to put them in Castile, see if we can improve our relations there. I'm not sure that it's something that we can really pull off, but I've got nothing else for my diplomats to do at this time, so let's go and, uh, and do that, that'll be okay. So, more status. So they've gotten some more alliances, but the others haven't actually joined in yet. We're taking some losses here, but we should actually do okay. Although I should have assigned a leader there. That was a little bit foolish of me. I will actually assign a leader over here. Uh, armies without leaders can be broken really, really easily. So Royal marriage with Portugal, good. Oh, see, and there's a huge group over there. What we really want is, yeah, move into there, and you just go off into sea, and hopefully... Actually, oh god, it'd be faster if I get the ships into port, isn't it? I'm not sure. First of December. Hmm. I don't know if they'll be able to disengage and just be attached to the transport, or I just have to move them out to sea, and they'll, they'll have to fight for a few days, but then they'll be able to move out into sea. You know what, I'm going to start the motion. I think that's what we're going to have to do. Yeah, and then whenever you can leave, just leave. Austria declared war on Venice. Oh, that's going to end poorly for Venice. Probably. I mean, Austria, I think, is the Holy Roman Empire right now, or Emperor. Seriously, buddy, just run. I know you can do it. The ship's not overloaded, is it? No, it's got lots of room. Okay, we want to battle there, which is very nice. Um... Morale. Yeah, that'll recover soon. It can start sieging. I don't actually want it to siege. What I want to do is, is hit these guys afterwards. Hmm, I'm sure I've done this before. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now they were finally able to break out of the battle. So it is, does count as a loss, but they will be able to escape to the ship, and that will be fine. I won't have lost any regiments. I will... Um, they will be able to regenerate themselves from manpower, and that's exactly what I want. Come on, get on the ship. Okay, I know I'm running the game at a pretty low speed, but I feel like there's a lot of stuff to micromanage right now. So I'm going to drop you off in Gascon. Uh, you guys are still recovering, and you're sieging there, which is nice. I don't know what that pop-up was. And this is clearly... 
I guess it's showing me, it's going here to show me that there's a cost and it shows me on my economy screen, but it's fine. Alright, so this is going to get sieged really hard. Now, I'm not sure if they've got a um, um, an access, what do you call it? Like a right of way? Military access with uh, Burgundy over here, so I don't know if they can get to Calais. Status quo. Actually, I wonder. I think I can just like actually land in here and not get a penalty to my combat. Although, what kind of shape are my troops in? Oh, they're fine. They still don't have a leader assigned to them, though. Oh, this one does. The Army of Scotland. Oh, okay. That's fine, then. Good stuff. Alright, that's being sieged. Oh, Scotland has made a move. You know what? Go here. You, I know we were keeping you behind so that you could um, jump on a boat, but you'll be able to do that from Cumbria as well. Let's uh, cart you over there. I just want to use this army because it's slightly bigger. I could actually combine them and get an even more overwhelming battle, but I think that'll be okay. So this battle here, I... Oh, I do have a crossing penalty. Although, yeah, landing on a beach. Well, that's too bad. So I should have probably gone to Gasco and then just walked them over. Although they might have still gotten a river crossing penalty. I'm not 100% sure how the river crossing penalties work. So yeah, we're being mostly annoying in southern France. Uh, as opposed to, like, generally overwhelming. But, you know, we're winning a few battles here and there. So far the score is being kept even. And we can... Where are you going? Oh, to here. Yeah, we can chase you to there. You keep doing that. Meanwhile, my actual navy, we are going to bring you over here to Cumbria because we're going to pick up that bigger army when we get a chance to do so. Here we're going to detach a siege and then send the rest of them to attack Fife. Oh! How'd they get to 14? Hold on. You stop there. Good god. Oh, they might have gotten their event, right? Um, let's come back to you. Well, I guess we are going to take advantage of the fact that we can easily support a couple more troops. I'm going to use the new production interface screen over here. And I'm going to build just a cup. Oh, I don't have any money. All right, let's take out a loan. So minting is one of the things that's gone. So you may have noticed this economy screen is does not have as many sliders as it used to be. That's because the tech has been uh, farmed out to the new uh, PowerPoint system, and I think it's a huge gain. Um, some people, I, I think, are... are mistakenly believing that it has simplified the game and I don't think that's the case at all I think like many changes in the U4 it's simply um, it's made things more transparent and clear and making the decisions but the decisions aren't simpler in fact I think there's more decisions and they're more critical uh, because every button does something much much more significant and you're really having to put a lot of thought into each one of those clicks as opposed to sort of just fiddling with some sliders and you know something's gonna happen a couple of years from now um, but one of the things is minting is gone and frankly it, because they got rid of the whole annual income versus monthly income because yeah that was kind of silly um, so uh, it's, everything is monthly income. You get a certain amount of income, certain amount of expense, whatever you've got left over goes into your treasury. And you can take out a loan. And in addition to having to pay back the interest, taking out a loan also increases inflation. And realistically, that's how it works. When you um, take out a loan in this sort of system, well, I, well, maybe that's more of a modern type of thing. I don't know. But you're taking out a loan against your national bank, which does generate in er, inflation. And all, there's also interest and different things like that. So that's how it works now. It's a button press. If you ever go broke, it automatically takes out a loan, but you can always take one out whenever you want. You can also repay it whenever you want, and that's fine. So I'm going to take one out right now so that I can uh, use my V hotkey to build a couple more cavalry. I'm going to build it. Um, technically, it can be sli built slightly faster over here. On the other hand, there'll be more sort of time for things to move. So I'm going to build it in uh, Marches and Darby. I know my pronunciation of most English counties, actually most counties in general, is going to be simply awful. Um, although, I'm pretty sure I get Darby right. I don't know why it's Darby as opposed to Derby, but you know, it's at least there. Uh, so you ran off some more. I know I do this, like, stop and go, hey, Portugal! Awesome, way to go, buddy. Thanks for your help. Um, let's combine you two. 
and detach a siege and then go there. We're gonna have to babysit these guys, make sure we don't get snuck attacked. Okay, one out and five. And you know what? We're gonna go ahead and actually chase you down. Where are you gonna run off to? The Western Isles. So we're gonna chase you down completely. So the way that um, the units work when they break now, they try to run two provinces away, and they do at very quick speed because they're not organized army anymore. They're just running. Uh, and then when they get there, they'll probably have a pretty low morale and they won't be able to move for a while. And if you do chase them down to that area and then you fight them when they've got that completely broken morale, you will just completely destroy all their regiments. And I like that a lot. Um, especially CK2, you've got a real problem sometimes with kind of whack-a-mole type stuff. Very annoying. Um, you know what? Let's detach the siege. Send these guys over here. We'll combine them here, detach, and then go and beat these guys up. Which sounds like a good way to do it. Detach. Go over here. Revolt in Glamorang. Glamorgan? Glamorgan. Uh, high taxes, cultural differences, religious differences. Really? Eight rebels? Or we can lower taxes. Eight, you know what? Eight rebels is probably a little too much for us to deal with right now, and I hate having lower taxes. It's only for two years. We lose one prestige. Which, again, prestige hurts, but I think in this particular situation, it's worth doing. Is, are there really religious differences? No, it's just cultural things. It's because they're Welsh. We need 100 diplomatic power to change their culture. I mean, and culture can change through a variety of different ways, but that's an example of, you know, you're sending some diplomats over there, you're telling them how great it is to be English, um, because things, I don't know... And, um, you know, you're trying to get them to give up their Welshiness. Oh, are they going to leave by boat? That would be pretty slick if they did that. Oh, I didn't follow. Oh, because there were boats blocking the way. Uh, well, that's kind of stuff. Um, let's move to Ayrshire. We're going to want to... I want to crush this army. If possible. So we're going to attack from a few different sides. Uh, which? Okay. Actually, I don't know if I have enough. I might just have to let them finish sieging there. Because other than that, if I brought these guys, that would be 5, um, 13, 17. That might be enough. What kind of territory? There's no river crossing, at least. I don't know what kind of leader they've got. Yeah, we might be able to do okay. We'll keep sieging Lothian. Down here we're all good still? Yes, good. We're certainly down on the war. I should probably just like... Let's see, automatic loan. Combine and bring you down over here. we will pick these guys up. I should probably just give up a couple of territories and deal with something else. Hey, we have an heir to the throne. Great. Do we know anything about him? Mm, no. Oh, well, he's going to be better than me. I like that's the problem. Henry has no stats. Lollard Heresy. Oh, that's the one thing we need to do is spend some money improving our stability. That's going to help a lot. Uh, no, we're going to stop the heretics, which is going to increase our um, local revolt risk considerably. And Catholics are going to gain more reform desire. It's also going to cost us money and cost us stability. Holy cow. This is actually really bad. Um, you know, France is already going to hate us. Stability. We, can, you know, we can't even afford to do this. You know what? We can't go into negative stability. Oh, I don't want heretics. But I guess we're just going to have to put up with it. All right. Let's uh, drop these guys off over here. Okay, we've got our new cavalry cavalry over here. Um, this is still being sieged. Sieges do take a long time. But it goes a little faster when you can spread out like this and siege many, many, many things at once. So, this game is not all about warfare. It just so happens that when you start as England... Yeah. Um, when you start as England, you are just starting in the middle of a war. So, ah, uh, he is going to run. Now, I could just drop these guys off via ship. 
That's very interesting. Um, and uh, and then I would catch them, but then you get the river crossing penalty. Now here I'm going to get a small river pro crossing penalty, not as much as the beach landing, but that's going to work out okay. Oh, we won the siege in Armagnac. That's really cool. Although, there we go. Now France is coming with all of its forces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, group up over here, even though it means breaking one siege. Hopefully they're just going to sit in siege somewhere. There we go. Ports are blockaded. Really? That's, I guess, what I should be doing with my ships, just blockading all of France. I guess I don't need them right now. Um, I wonder if I can catch these guys. Really? I lost there? I'm actually quite surprised. And I lost the regiment altogether. That's really sucky. Okay, these guys have been broken pretty solidly. So, these guys are running. Um, they're retreating all the way to Aberdeen. So, we're just going to tell our guys to go there. You know what? What I should do... There's actually not much of a French coast to blockade. Which is kind of funny. Yeah, that's going to be an annoying people to catch. Yeah, and then he's just going to go in.